let's see what happens when we actually eat something, okay? Uh, what are sort of the events that take place, and then what's the pathway that food kind of moves through? So we start with chewing, right? Mastication. You'll see the incisors here. We've got the oral cavity. We put that food in our mouth, and we're chewing, chewing, chewing it up. You can see hard palate here. You can see soft palate. This is the tongue. In fact, underneath the tongue, you'll see the sublingual salivary gland, sublingual, under the tongue. This is submandibular, under the mandible. In fact, you can see that one here as well, submandibular salivary gland. And then here's parotid salivary gland. So parotid salivary gland, submandibular salivary gland, Here's submandibular again on this side, sublingual. They all, are all secreting saliva, basically, to help lubricate the food so that you can swallow it down. So you chew it up, chew it up, chew it up. You swallow it down, and it starts to go down your esophagus, okay? Uh, you cannot see the esophagus right through here, but I'll tell you, if we continue all the way down like this, and I remove the heart, what you'll actually see You'll recognize the aorta here, but you'll see the esophagus coming all the way through, posterior to the heart, all the way past the diaphragm. I'm going to remove the liver for a second. In fact, let me just point this out. Right lobe of the liver, falciform ligament, left lobe of the liver. If I take this out, you can look on the posterior side you'll see inferior vena cava in blue. You'll see the gallbladder here in green. But continuing on, the pathway of food, we've got the esophagus coming down, like I said, passing through the diaphragm, and here it is right here. So that's our esophagus. From there, leads into the stomach. This is the fundus. This is the body. This is the pylorus of the stomach. The stomach then leads into, take this off, the duodenum. So the duodenum is the first part of the small intestines. You can see the pancreas here. That's one of the accessory glands of the digestive system. I already removed the liver and the gallbladder. Those are also accessory structures of the digestive system. But we get into the duodenum here, and then from here, we're now in the small intestines. And the small intestines are gonna move all the way through here. So duodenum, jejunum, we get down to the ileum over here. In fact, if I take this off, let me just remove this for one second. This is part of the large intestine. If I take this off, what you can see actually is that little spot right there. That's the end of the ileum. And we are going at this point into the large intestine. So the first part of the large intestine right here is called the cecum. In fact, if I open this up, you can imagine this food stuff moving up all the way through here and passing through this ileocecal sphincter into the large intestine. So this first little pouch down here is the cecum. Um, not part of the digestive system, but you can see the vermiform appendix right underneath here. Um, is that um, food material, which is really becoming waste product at this point, starts to move through the large intestine. It has to go first up this region right here. And this is what we call the ascending colon. In fact, if I put this one on right here, these other terms will start to make sense. We have the ascending colon coming up like this. We have the right colic flexure, which is sometimes called the hepatic flexure because the liver is over there. Then we have the transverse colon. From that point, we get to the left colic flexure, or sometimes called the splenic flexure because here's your spleen right here. Then we have the descending colon. Descending colon then moves into the sigmoid colon, 
we call this sigmoid colon here because it sort of has like the Greek S, right? The sigma, the Greek S kind of loops around there and then goes behind. It's going to lead to the anus. Uh, these structures along here are called hostra. And you'll see this line that runs all the way through. This is a layer, several layers of smooth muscle. It's called the tinea coli. Helps with the process of peristalsis. What you're looking at right here, this is called the mesentery. The mesentery, and you can also see these mesenteric arteries and veins that are running through them. The mesentery essentially is what holds your intestines in place. In fact, if I bring this one back, the small intestine, and I show you the back side, the back side here doesn't look like the front side. The front side, you can actually see the intestines. Back side, the model shows the mesentery. Again, it prevents things from kind of swimming around inside your, your digestive system. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, the anterior side doesn't exactly look like this, where you can just see the intestines. There's actually sort of a fatty apron that covers this. It's called the omentum. But nonetheless, in this model, you can see the small intestines pretty clearly. Um, that's kind of the way that food passes through. Since we're doing this, if I remove all of this and kind of show you what's left back here, again, not necessarily part of the digestive system, but we have the spleen over here. We have the paired kidneys on either side, right kidney, left kidney. We have the adrenal glands or the suprarenal glands up top here. And if we work our way all the way back up, again, not necessarily part of the digestive system, but you can see your laryngeal prominence, that's your Adam's apple, the thyroid cartilage, the thyroid gland itself, and then this is part of the trachea, the windpipe, leads all the way down to the carina, and that's what splits into the right and left primary bronchus, makes its way all the way down to the secondary and tertiary bronchi. Again, that's respiratory system in the lungs there, but you can see it pretty easily on this model.